As much as people complain about the income tax, there is a fundamental misunderstanding about the 16th Amendment we need to clear up. The amendment reads, the Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. The 16th Amendment did not establish the federal income tax. And as we've already seen, federal income taxes predate the 16th Amendment. So what did this modification to federal power do that was so damaging? It was the first and so far only allowance of the federal government to directly tax the people without apportionment to the states. For the first time in our nation's history, the federal government had an interest in how much money you make and how you spend it. Before the 16th Amendment, unless you were in the military, the only contact you had with the federal government was the post office. Today, the American people spend all year keeping track of how much money they make and how they spend it. Decisions such as buying a house or how to invest their savings is often driven by the deductions on their taxes they would be able to claim. This amendment and the complex network of laws Congress has created around it leads millions of Americans to spend over $8 billion a year on tax preparation services. Effectively, tax avoidance has surpassed even baseball as our national pastime, all thanks to the 16th Amendment. The impact of the 16th Amendment goes far beyond time, effort, and money. The most fundamental change has to do with the removal of the states from the collection of federal taxes. Both the 1862 and 1894 income taxes would have been constitutional if only Congress had apportioned them to the states rather than collect them directly. The states would have a say in those taxes, wouldn't they? It's a lot easier for the IRS to bully an individual or business to pay what the government wants than it would be for them to bully a state government. Remember, Congress is only allowed to collect taxes to do three things. According to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1, the Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. Now, states could look at how Congress was using the taxes collected and refuse to collect the unconstitutional excess. The states could also impact how those taxes were collected. Since the American people have the most influence on the government closest to them, you would have more say over the collection of income taxes in your state than you ever will have in the federal government. Furthermore, rather than a person or business being expected to defend themselves in an administrative law court where everyone but the defendant works for the government, your state could defend you in federal court, and if necessary, even with the state militia.